I'm going to show how to make Springerly. Springerly is a type of German cookie that has an imprint design within the top of the cookie. This design is made by pressing a cookie mold into the dough and allowing the impression to dry before baking. The name Springerly translates to Little Jumper or Little Knight. This is due to the way it rises or springs up from the bottom as it bakes. The bottom rise is typically known as the foot. Cookie molds come in many different shapes, sizes, and designs. They are traditionally carved from wood, however, Modern day cookie molds are made from a variety of materials, including plastic and metal. They are usually in the form of a block that can be stamped into the dough or in the form of a rolling pin. Here are the ingredients for making basic Springerly. We usually purchase a two pound box of cake flour, so I have enough for two batches. The ammonia powder was difficult to find at local stores, so it was purchased online. You will also need a good mixer with a whip and dough attachment. Begin by measuring out one pound of cake flour. Next, add in a heaping one eighth of a teaspoon of ammonia powder. Mix well using a whisk. Then measure out one pound of powdered sugar and set aside. Now select four eggs. Take one of the eggs and separate the yolk from the egg whites. I recommend using an egg yolk separator like this one. Discard the egg yolk and set the egg whites aside. Next, prepare a mixer by installing the wire whip attachment. Pour the three whole eggs into the mixing bowl, followed by the egg whites from the single egg. Whip the eggs at a fairly high speed for at least 10 minutes. Then, on medium speed, add in the flavored oil. I'm using lemon flavored in this recipe, however, anise is considered to be more traditional. Bring the mixing speed up and continue mixing for a couple more minutes. Next, on medium speed, add in one pound of powdered sugar. It's best to add in a little at a time. You do not want any clumps. If you're experimenting with different colors, this is the point in which you could add in food coloring. Note that I won't be adding any to this batch. Once mixed, install the dough attachment, also known as a flat beater. The cake flour and ammonia powder mix will be added next. Also, if you want to experiment with chocolate flavor, this is the point in which you would add two ounces of cocoa mix in 14 ounces of cake flour. Once again, I will not be doing that for this batch. Spoon in the cake flour, adding a little bit at a time in order to keep it from clumping. Continue mixing for several minutes. Then, test the consistency of the dough. It shouldn't be too sticky, leaving residual on your fingers. If it appears too sticky, Take some cake flour and add small spoonfuls to the mix until you get the perfect consistency. Then transfer the dough to a sheet of plastic wrap and cut the dough in half. You don't want the dough to dry out too quickly, therefore wrap each half in plastic wrap and set aside. Now prepare a sheet pan by lining it with parchment paper. Do not use wax paper. Select a small amount of dough and place it on a pastry mat. Lightly dust the area with flour and roll the dough out in this manner.
Roll the dough until it's about the thickness of a pencil. Next, select a cookie mold and dust the dough and the mold with a little flour. Then press the mold into the dough. The amount of force used is trial and error. This, of course, will vary from person to person. You'll want to press in just enough for the full impression and no further. You definitely don't want the cookie to be too thin. Then cut it out in this manner. Transfer each finished cookie to the sheet pan. Continue on kneading and rolling the trimmings for the next cookie. Try different techniques and tools when cutting out the cookies. Sometimes a cookie cutter can be modified to fit the mold. One of our favorite cutting tools is called a crinkle cutter. It leaves a nice decorative edge as seen here. When using a rolling pin mold, be sure to dust it thoroughly with flour. However, be careful not to clog the molds. You'll want to give it a few good bumps to knock off the residual flour. Press down and roll in this manner. You will have more control over the applied force than if you use the handles on the end. A rolling pin mold has the advantage of saving time due to its quick and large coverage. Plus, you can choose the size of the cookie by the way you cut the dough. Once the sheet pan has been loaded, set the cookies aside to dry at room temperature. Do not place in the sunlight. You do not want these to dry out too quickly. The amount of drying time really depends on the humidity of your environment. These were placed on the kitchen counter and sat for 18 hours. Randomly inspect the cookies throughout the next day. They are done drying when the top imprint is dry and the bottom still has a moist center surrounded by a quarter inch dry ring. Next, preheat the oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a good idea to bake some test cookies before doing the whole batch. That way, you can have a chance to fine tune the timer or temperature if needed on the final round. Right before baking, moisten the bottom of each cookie on a water-soaked towel before placing them on a sheet pan. Then place them on the bottom rack and bake for 25 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Once finished, remove from the oven and inspect the cookies for doneness and for rise. If satisfied, repeat this process with the rest of the cookies. Remove the final batch of cookies from the oven and place on a cooling rack. The finished cookies will have a hardened imprint on the top and a raised, cracked bottom where the moist spot once was. The cookies are now ready to serve or can be stored in the freezer for up to three months in an airtight container.